Hello, my friends, and welcome to Disney Travel Secrets. Robin Carey Stewart coming to you from the beautiful studio right here, creating magic vacations in Windermere, Florida. You're listening to episode number 378, original air date, May 13th, 2024. And we are back from Perry. We is. As we they is. say. No, we are. We are. <laughs> and we are super excited to tell you all about our trip to our first international park, Disneyland Paris. And that was our seventh and eighth park, but our first international park. This is a trip that we're going to talk about for years. And yes, it was even better because we were traveling with our friends that were there on last year's Adventures by Disney trip. And we said, hey, we're going to do something. Uh, we're going to do something in Europe next year. And they said, we're in. And guess what? We're working on something for next year, and you're invited. Yes, it's going to be super fun. And we may even do more than one. No, like we may no, do no. a couple. We will see. No, we're not doing more. Yeah, no, but our our goal though is to have multiple trips in 2025, and I think that we can do it. And of course, while we were gone, oh my gosh, Disney, how about we just make a really, really big announcement? Yeah. So let's just say it was who to you, and you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> Take it away, Hugh. <laughs> Hello, my friends. This is former Disney Imagineer Hugh Darley, and you're listening to Disney Travel Secrets with my friends, Rob and Carrie Stewart. As you can imagine, I have plenty of Disney secrets myself, and I can't wait to share them with you. Let's get this show on the road. Take it away, guys. If you've ever thought about being in the travel business, especially with Robin Carey. We are still bringing on new agents, so reach out to us and we would love to help you. Yeah, and one of the cool things is when you do join Creating Magic Vacations, part of your enrollment with us is it does include a ticket to our Agent Palooza event where you get to come and get some more training, meet a lot of our travel partners, and that includes a three-night stay at the Host Hotel, which this next year is, is Contemporary Resort. So super excited about that is in January. Yep. So if you are interested, you love travel or you love Disney and traveling, definitely head on over to creatingmagicvacations.com and click on the join our team. This past January, we did our event over at the Grand Floridian and we had 85 of our agents and 30 of our travel partners, every cruise line you've heard of and probably about 17 you haven't. So yeah, we'd love to have you join us and uh, we're going to be at the Contemporary. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So one of our favorite things about travel, and if you know us or you've ever met us, whether it's in the parks or maybe you're one of our clients, is meeting people while traveling. And so to kind of kick off this show, we do have some special shout outs to some new friends we made from across the pond. And this is kind of funny. So we're going to say hi to Lynn, Louise, Ian, and Graham from Carlisle, England. Which is like right on the border of Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Did I say it right? Edinburgh. I know. They were trying to like educate me. We have no idea how to say this. <laughs> no, the cool part was, we just grabbed a drink. We were over at Walt Disney Studios, and I said, okay, we're going to go. We had uh, the premier access pass to, to Ratatouille. Yeah, which you'll hear all about. And we said, okay, we're going to go just kind of hang out, ha have a glass of beer, in my case, wine in her mm -hmm. case. And we end up talking to these people that were really, really fun. Yeah, they were super fun. And so we wanted to give them a special shout out. Hopefully they're listening. Um, so one And if they're not, shame on you. <laughs> I know, but one of the things they introduced us to was one, they have a beautiful vacation home. I think it was in Spain or it South is in Spain. Is, is it Spain? It okay. Is Spain, yeah. They showed us pictures. So if you're ever interested in going to that part of the world, just know they have something beautiful. We can hook you up. Um, but they introduced us to what is called the Q beer. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, it's basically when you're in the queue, you have a beer. Yeah. And that's it's, all they're just that, like that's you grab literally, a beer. That's all we need to know when you're in You know in, what though? But here's what I loved about it is in I guess in Europe it's totally fine for you to take your drinks into the queue. Whereas in the US, once you get into most of the queues, you have to finish that before a certain time. But they also told us about the queue shot. <laughs> they did. <laughs> anyway, it was super fun to meet you and hopefully you guys are tuning in. So as we mentioned before, this was not our first trip to Paris. We'd done this 10 years ago, literally in, it was April of, of 2014. And we were doing a proof of concept video shoot for Alma Waterways. And they had, you know, we'd taken the train from, from Lyon over to Paris. It was just literally, we were going to fly out the next morning. So we didn't know anything about this city. Yeah. And we also, at the time, we weren't really into Disney. So we didn't even think to go to Disneyland Paris on that particular trip. Oh my gosh. Okay. That is true. Yeah. That is true. So we were super excited to visit our seventh and eighth Disney 
park, and which our, was kind of cool. Our first international parks, which was cool. Yep. And, and so next week, we're going to really break down uh, the differences between the U.S. parks, both being in Florida and California, and also um, the parks over in Paris. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to show you some of the same rides, what are the same, what are different. And also, I think really from a park perspective, what is the difference between the U.S. and Paris parks. Yeah. So if you are interested in going to Disneyland Paris, we do have kind of some general things that you should know before you go. So let's- Bring an umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we will get to that. So over in Disneyland Paris, there are two parks. You have Disneyland, which is your main one. Disneyland and, Paris. Yep. And then you have Walt Disney Studios, which is more of like designed- or, Similar to Hollywood Studios, it, I would say. It really say. is. If you're going to compare the two, Disneyland Paris is like Magic Kingdom or or Disneyland. And Walt Disney Studios is very similar to Hollywood Studios. Although, it's hard to really figure that part out because there was so much construction that I really don't even know what the park looks like. Yeah, because they do have a new land. It's They're building kind of like an Arendelle. So, very Frozen themed. That's going to be coming out, but probably not until I would say 2025, 2026. I was thinking 2035, so we're good, we're, <laughs> it, we're good on that. Yeah, but if you do go into Paris, it is either a short train ride and they do have a stop directly at the front of the park, which is kind of cool. That one that one surprised me. We, we use Black Lane, which is our, our kind of our company of choice. So, if we're traveling internationally we use black lane private transfers but the fact that the tgv train drops you off right there yeah so it's great if you're going to be doing a trip and you're staying in paris you want to pop on over for a day super easy to do in our case we decided that we got off the ship and then it was about a 45 minute car ride you have paris traffic i will say and- it was an s-class mercedes so i was okay <laughs> about that and so we ended up staying on property. And that was one of the things I think was a really good decision for us. So we did two nights and three days. I would not do those parks if I was not staying at a Disney owned property. Yeah. Unless I was going to do like just like a one day thing. I wouldn't. I mean, I know Taylor Swift was there this past weekend. Yeah. Taylor was actually, Taylor was at our hotel. Well, no, she was, no, she wasn't wasn't at Disneyland. She was doing concerts there. Taylor was really cool. She was really sweet. (laughs) One of the unique things is when you do a vacation package with Disneyland Paris. If you're going to stay for two nights, you automatically will get a three day ticket. And you that's can't why pick we did and this. choose. Yeah. <laughs> and so we we originally were like, okay, should we stay at the Disneyland hotel? And I was like, I saw the price tag. I'm like, oh my god, that was expensive. Yeah. So over there, they're actually uh, they have the same thing. They have value, moderate, and deluxe resorts. The best one, of course, is going to be the Disneyland Hotel. It recently went through refurbishments and just reopened. And so that is the one that is the closest to the parks. And it would be fantastic if that's within your budget. And then once you get to the next level, you have the New York Hotel, the Art of Marvel, the longest title, as you said. I know. I can't believe they did that. Yeah, which that one is the newest one that they have refurbished, rebuilt, and it was fantastic. We'll tell you more about that. And it was only really a short walk to get into both of the parks. Like, now, if you're staying at the Disneyland Hotel, I would say this is very close to like the Grand Californian where you walk right into the parks. And that's the case with the Disneyland Hotel. Yeah. And the unique thing about it is unlike Walt Disney World or Disneyland in California, you can't just go into that hotel and check it out. And that makes me want to go see it even more, even though we didn't get the chance to do that. But I would love to go stay there. But the difference in cost for this particular trip was insane. Like we did... It was a, we did a three day, two night stay, which included the tickets. And to go to that hotel in particular, it would have been another, what, $1,500? I think it was like another $1,500 for the two nights. Yeah. So $750 a night to move up to basically get five minutes closer was not worth it to me. Yeah. I do want to see the hotel though. I know. It did look absolutely beautiful. We stayed at the New York Hotel and then you also have the Newport Beach and both of those were very close. And then you also have the Sequoia Lodge. And that one was, we had, um, the honeymooners were staying there and they were like, it's super close. It took them like 10, 15 minutes to walk over to it Disney probably, yeah, Village. Probably, probably not even more than a more than five or 10 minutes. More. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't so bad. And then they also have some of the more value resorts. And we have some good friends that are um, over in England and they would go down and they said those are definitely more value. So if you are thinking of going to Disneyland Paris, I recommend you stay at least in one of the four hotels that we mentioned. And I would say at least stay at the you know 
Disney Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel. And it's so funny. We were on, on Saturday was our checkout day. We're like, hey, by the way, you know what? We haven't even looked at the hotel. And we went over to and just kind of walked around. That hotel is amazing. They it's have like, so, almost like a museum itself. It, they have so much art from Marvel. Yeah, it was which is kind of why it's in the name. Um, but we talked to uh, Aran, who led us into this very exclusive place. Well, it's only for guests staying yeah. at the hotel, and so they had some really cool photo opportunities where you can put yourself in the stories of Marvel. Make sure that you look at the instructions before you take all these pictures. We did it wrong the first 17 times <laughs> because we were doing them vertical. You're supposed to take them supposed horizontal. Them but blah, you know blah, what? Blah. That was really, it was something fun. One of the things I loved about the hotel that we were at was the pool. And so when we arrived, we our room wasn't ready. One thing about when you go to Europe is when they say the rooms aren't ready until three, they will not be ready until three. They will three. text you at 2.59. Yeah. And so that's just something that is part of that culture. And it's not like here in the U.S. where sometimes your room will get be ready earlier. And that was not the, you know, we were prepared for that. So we went so, and we hung out I at know, the pool was, for a little one bit. Of those things. So we had gone over to, um, we went to Walt Disney Studios and it was one of those days, it was like 45 and drizzly the whole day. Yeah, it definitely was very rainy, and which we, is typical. We had not, we had brought the right clothing, but the clothing was in said check bags. And so we're like, oh my God, this is terrible. So we go back, it's like one o'clock. I'm like, please let me in my room, please. I need to sleep. And she's like, well, you can go down to the pool. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to go sit at the pool. And she goes, uh, sir, um, it's indoor. I'm like, Oh. Yeah. So it definitely was a beautiful <laughs> pool and something that was, you know, unique. And, you know, we don't really have indoor pools here in Florida. So I actually we don't thought need it was kind of fun. It, you know, it was nice. It, it, it was so funny because the, we took our, our main bags where we had checked those when we had, had came to the hotel. And basically, we just sat down at the pool and grabbed a towel and uh, it just, just took a nap. Laid there and took a nap. It was kind of like, it was like a sweat house. It was like a. Is that, it felt good. The humidity felt good. Yes, we were so used to humidity that yeah. we we really liked it. But again, uh, the hotel was really really nice. We were on the first floor, which means we had a patio uh, with a couple chairs outside, and this was the biggest part. They did not charge us extra for this, which I thought they could have. There was a cigarette in one of our chairs. I know cigarettes are a big <laughs> thing over in Europe. I was like, did they not clean the chair? They did not. But it was a. You know, a nice marble. Yeah. So one of the things that is different about Disneyland Paris is booking things in advance. And so they have their 60-day window for dining reservations. So if you have some of those restaurants that you really want to try, there's a few that are a little more popular. But when it comes to booking like your actual hotel and your ticket packages, it's not as stressful as it is for Walt Disney World. You are correct. So over at Disneyland Paris, they have two parks and they have what's called the Disney Village, which over here in Orlando, we call this Disney Springs or in California, call it Downtown Disney. It's basically the restaurant and shopping district. It definitely is much, much smaller, though. Way smaller. Way smaller. So they were only... They, have, they have McDonald's. And they did a, have a McDonald's. And an Earl of Sandwich. Yeah. And both were fantastic. We actually went to both of those. And then they only had a, like a few restaurants, so not a whole lot. And the shopping hours, you definitely want to pay attention to because in the morning, some of the shops weren't open. And then there were some that were open in the evening. But you definitely walk through that area when you are headed into the parks, very similar to what you see out in California. So also, I would say that as far as Walt Disney Studios and then also Disneyland Paris, there were so many rides that that matched up. They were the same here mm -hmm. you know, as in Florida, the same here as in California. But I will tell you that Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland Paris is the bomb. Yeah. It so is the most amazing castle ever. Yeah. So that was like a real highlight for us. And, you know, next week we're going to be talking about the, some of the comparison of the rides. But when it comes to the castle, that was one of the stars of this trip. And what I liked about it was you can actually walk into the castle. You can go up and you can just read through the story it's all in French. And no, you don't need to speak French to enjoy the parks. They do a lot of stuff in English and in French. It does help. But one of the <laughs> things I love, though, is using the phone to just do the translate where you can like you put your did, phone yeah. over. And I was exactly. doing that just to read the story. But one of the cool features, and our friend Margo had told us, like, when you go, you have to make sure you check this out. And that is underneath the castle, 
there is a dragon. So if you go over to Instagram, the the Disney Travel Secrets Instagram page, that is one of our most popular reels. And you just sit there and it is the dragon, you know, from Maleficent. And it was just really cool. And I would say probably half the people did not even know it was there. Yeah. And so we we went down there and there's several lots, times, several times, but there's lots of, one of the things I loved about the park was there were lots of like little mazes and different things that you could do and just explore. And the castle in and of itself has so many things that you can go and just, it just experience different viewpoints, different, you know, we, we walked upstairs, we were on the outside of the castle, we were on the bottom, we were that, underneath. Okay. It was so, so cool. That makes the castle so much different is you can go up the stairs and walk around, go outside, and then you have, you know, the area underneath again. I don't know why this doesn't happen in the U.S. parks, but that castle was hands down the best one they have. Yeah. And I did feel like when we were in Disneyland Paris that it w- while the magic was there, it wasn't quite the same as what we feel here in Florida. And I think a lot of it are some of the cultural differences. I think a lot of it is also, so, I mean, the cast members were definitely better here, you know, whether you're in Florida or California. The cast members are just so much more engaging. Yeah. And I think part of that is culture. One of the things, if you do go to Disneyland Paris, do not expect to walk down Main Street and have a ton of photo pass people or any photo pass people. There, there were there, none. Yeah. Other than if they have them on the rides and then you have to buy them after the ride, which is why I really love the Florida parks. Yeah. And so if you want your picture in front of the castle, you just either need to find another person who's in the park to take it for you or you just do a lot of selfies. That was something I was not expecting, especially knowing how beautiful that castle is. Another thing are the shows. And so they didn't have a big stage show in front of the castle itself. They do have a fireworks show at night. And temporarily, we were so lucky because they have a drone show right now. That's one thing I will say. The drone show was probably the most amazing Disney show I've ever seen across any of the eight parks that we've been to. How do you take the electric light parade that is on the water here over by, you know, by Magic Kingdom and, you know, Polly and Grand Florida and the Contemporary. How do you put that in the sky? Yeah, this was so special. And I know it's a limited release. So if you are going to be there this summer, you are going to be super lucky. I know that they do have a drone show coming to Disney Springs. They have to have. And so I'm super you, excited to see you, what you that one's going to be. You can't take that technology and only keep it in, you know, Paris. You have to bring it to the U.S. because just seeing what they did, we were standing there just jaws wide open going, how could they possibly do this? Yeah. So that was definitely one of the highlights for me over at Disneyland Paris. And it just added a little extra. And then afterwards, they did a fireworks show. The fireworks in Disneyland Paris are nothing compared to what you see here in Florida. Not even close. Not even close. The projections were pretty good, but not quite the same. The projections were different because there are so many different facets to that particular castle that it's almost hard to get projections onto it. Yeah. But the fireworks, nothing like here in in the States. I'd say probably in Florida. Um, I think the California fireworks are okay, but the Magic Kingdom fireworks here in Florida are amazing. Yeah. Now, they also have their parade, and so that was just kind of like a standard parade. They only had like six or seven floats. They had more than six or seven. It was like eight or – it was somewhere between was eight good, and a hundred. I get but it. But you know what was different, though, is people, while they were lined up, they weren't – Lining up like hours before, like you they see weren't here sitting in on the streets like we are used yeah. to seeing here in Florida. Yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. But also, in the morning, they had um, this one car we call the Pokey. It was the Pokey. It was it was the police car. Yeah. So if you've ever been to Magic Kingdom and they have like the cars that are they have the double decker bus or that you can jump on some of the vintage cars and they will take you from the front of the park and they'll drive you up. They had the same thing. This one was a police car. I was surprised that they did it so far into the afternoon because we yeah. saw this, you know, we did this Way Saturday into the morning afternoon. and I'm like, oh my God, they're still doing this. And again, this is in the middle of the day, people are walking right down Main Street and he's honking his horn like, get out of the way. And, and in France, I don't know if you guys know this, in France, it's okay if you just hit people. So he didn't even have to use the horn. He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting people. I'm getting 10 points a person. So one of the things I found very different um, over at Disneyland Paris were the lack of strollers. 
And okay, that is true. I yeah, was, yeah, there were not a lot of strollers, and I think I know the reason why. And this was because we had done some tours in Paris. It's because people are too tall for strollers in France. Well, th- we had done some <laughs> we had done some tours in Paris, and there's a lot of hills, there's a lot of steps, and again, Paris is old, and so having a stroller would be really Hold hard. On. Did you just say Paris is old? It is. Okay, so I just want to be clear. Yeah, and so I think that kids in general, they are expected to not be in strollers, unlike here in the U.S. And so if you Because they will be rolling down cobblestone streets yeah, and so until they hit the river. We saw a lot of really, really young kids just walking, but that was something I thought that was really, really unique. I agree. I agree. The other thing that I really, really liked when it comes to Disneyland Paris, and if you have the budget, I would 100% spend the money on this. And that is the Premier Access Pass. I would 100% agree. And this is something we did. And it's they don't have this here in the States. But we paid 160 euro. I have no idea what that was. But, in actual in, dollars. but if we were going to the other park up the road here in Florida, yeah. we would have spent even more to get something comparable, which is the Unlimited Express Pass. But here's how it works. When you... When you purchase this, then you get to go in the fast lane. So they don't really, it's the premier access lane for any of the rides that offer it. And you can go at least one time. And so for Rob and I, if you've been listening to us, listening to us for a while, then you know, we are not like rope drop people. We're not to queue close. people. We're not, we don't, we don't like to stand in the yeah, queue. But we're also not people who go all day. However, for our one day in Paris, when the weather was really, really nice on Friday, okay, we did rope drop. It was insane. Yeah, we did rope drop to close, and we were able, with our pass, to get in 16 different rides, which is yes. massive. And we also even took a two-hour break. We did. We we came back to the hotel and took a little maybe two-hour kind of a rest we break. Did like a like a work rest break, and then we went yeah. right back. So make sure you're, you're tuning into next week's show, because we're going to break it down how much time we saved, because we actually, we clocked how much would it how much time would we be in the line versus when we walked on? Um, and I think, I what, mean, what, what score we got on, on Buzz Lightyear over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we definitely will compare, but the other thing is if you don't want to do the premier access pass, they also have the option very similar to the individual lightning lanes here in Florida yeah. where you can purchase it for just the one ride. And that price definitely varies. No. Yeah. And we looked at this, we said, okay, how many rides could we get on? And we just said, you know what, if you do, if you're going to buy the individual rides, they will give you a window to come back right. in. And with the Premier Access Pass, we could basically just walk on whenever we wanted. And so we wanted to kind of kind of look at, at this and say, okay, um, if we did, if we bought the pass, what time will we have to come back versus if we have the Premier Access Pass and just walk right on? And this is, we've never done this before ever at Disney and we clocked every single ride. Yeah. So it was super fun. I mean, overall, we loved the parks. One thing that gave me a whole new reminder and appreciation was when we got into the parks, we felt a little bit like fish out of water because we didn't know the parks. We did. We did. And I know for those of you listening or watching this and you're going to Disney for the first time, we understand what that feeling is because it's been a long time since we've had that with the Disney parks. And it just reminded me that it always helps to have somebody tell you and give you some advice. We had had some great advice from some of our friends who had been there and they had said, hey, make sure... You know, like Margot said, make sure you go see the dragon. We had Which somebody we else who said, Again. definitely go do Crush's Coaster. Which and I did not yeah. even know what that was. Yeah. And so there were definitely some really, really cool experiences because we had a little insider knowledge. If you are going to go to Disneyland Paris, my number one piece of advice is don't stress over over planning and get the Premier Access Pass because that's going to just open up a lot of possibilities and take a ton of stress away. I'm so glad that we did that. Well, it's also something we didn't plan for. We just said, okay, while we're here, this is what the Premier Access Pass is. So you can you can have all this advice. You can look at Facebook and all these other places. But when you get there, you have to know what boots on the ground really means. And we're like, okay, it's 160 euro per person. Again, that translates to, I think it's $3 million a person. And we just said, we're going to do this And not one time do we say, oh, my God, I can't believe we did this because we were walking on to every single ride. Now, don't do this for every day. But if you have one day, you're going to kind of do. In our case, it was pretty much open to close. If you're going to have a long, uh, a long ride day, a long park day, just get the premier access pass. Yeah. So before we close out this episode, 
Make sure you're subscribed to our show because next week we're going to do a comparison of the rides. And I definitely have a favorite oh, over know, in Disneyland Paris, which was so fun. But mm-hmm. while we were in Paris, we did make a new friend. And oh our new God. friend has his own Instagram account. It's called Disney Baguette. So go over to Instagram and definitely follow. Uh, we're calling him Baggy. And there's a big story here. But one of the, <laughs> the a highlights, very, there's a no, very big story. One of the it. big highlights, though, for um, Disney Baguette was he got to meet Mickey and Minnie. And we have a very special video over on his Instagram that you definitely need to check yeah, out. Again, so go go follow Disney Baguette over on Instagram. Disney Baguette is here. This is the legit Disney Baguette. If you're looking on YouTube, um, all the way from France, and yeah, it is. He's 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 a good it's week very, old at this it's point. It's very hard, right? Yeah. There's a there's a longer there's story a longer behind story this. Behind you have this. to tune in next week to find out. But we did really just start an entirely new Instagram account for the Disney Baguette. I promise you, you will love this story. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. And as always, if you would like help planning a trip to Disneyland Paris or to any of the U.S. parks, please reach out to us or to one of our Creating Magic Vacations travel advisors. Until next time, have a magical day. We hope to see you real soon.